In this episode, legendary Godzilla will be tasked to stop one of the most destructive cataclysms in history. An apocalyptic event set to destroy all life on Earth in the most devastating and horrifying way imaginable. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the rumbling. Today we will focus on the challenges that the G-Man will face upon colliding with entire legions of colossal titans, and discuss Godzilla's preferred strategies that will either end this rumbling once and for all or possibly get him killed. Will the G-Man prevail and establish order once again on the planet, or will he perish with the rest? All this and more in today's episode, Legendary Godzilla vs. The Rumbling. Let's first explain what the rumbling actually is. In the global hit anime known as Attack on Titan, we are introduced to an island known as Paradis, home of a group of people known as the Eldians. This place's most notable structures were these three walls that provided refuge for its inhabitants. This particular set of structures will be very important in this episode, so pay close attention. This said rumbling is an event that is triggered by a supernatural being known as the Founding Titan, which would unleash legions of massive humanoid creatures known as Colossal Titans. These would then proceed to trample everything in their path, causing death, destruction, and inevitable doom on the rest of the inhabitants of the world. What exactly are these things? As their name suggests, colossal or sometimes referred to as Colossus Titans are gigantic skinless humanoid beings that are around 60 meters in height. Each of these has regenerative attributes, capable of regenerating lost limbs, organs, and anything severely damaged from cuts or explosives. But the rumbling isn't just made up of a few of these. To say there are many more is an understatement. Back to these walls. Turns out that these 50-meter defensive structures were actually made up of many colossal titans that hardened into the shape of these walls. So now we can see that we aren't dealing with thousands of these, but potentially hundreds of thousands of colossal titans waiting to be unleashed. We know what some of you are thinking. It was said by an individual known as Carl Fritz that there were tens of millions. This was most likely an exaggeration, as well as William Tiber's statement that there were millions as well. We really can't take this at face value since the number doesn't add up. Here at Goji, we did you guys a favor and made a rough estimate on how many colossal titans would fit inside these walls. We won't bore you with all the math involved, but we went ahead and figured that these walls would most likely fit anywhere between 573 to 590,000 colossal titans. Although large, these massive creatures would move at speeds faster than a sprinting human, and even faster than a galloping horse. One of the commanders of the Survey Corps even claimed the rumbling could travel 600 kilometers inland within half a day, which puts their speed at around 50 kilometers per hour. Now that we have a good estimate of how many colossal titans Godzilla will face, let's now enter the simulation platform. Number 1. The First Encounter Will Godzilla even care about the destruction of mankind? Well, that depends. In the past, the G-Man has been a bit nonchalant when witnessing humans get killed as collateral damage. He's killed his fair share himself as well. To answer this question and to find out whether or not he'll get pissed at the rumbling, we need to understand his role in the planet, which is to maintain balance, equilibrium on Earth. Anything that contributes to the well-being of the Earth will be on Godzilla's good side, and anything that does not will face his wrath. In this scenario, the rumbling will begin here, the island of Madagascar. Oh, you thought the world of Attack on Titan is just random splotches of land? Watch this. <laughs> In order to hit the mainland, this army of colossal titans will have to cross the Mozambique Channel and head towards the African mainland. The objective? Destroy all human life outside of this body of land. The side effects of having tons of colossal titans swimming about are going to be quite devastating. These titans emit extremely hot gases that take form as steam. These in turn will cause the surrounding water to boil, literally cooking all life forms near the surface of the water along the rumbling's trajectory, turning the ocean into a salty fish soup. 
Godzilla will inevitably get a whiff of this and immediately get pissed. It's also important to note that the G-Man would have obviously felt something once the rumbling actually started. More on this later. But now we can bring up the fact that this kaiju is actually in tune and almost synced with the ocean itself. It can literally feel this happening, and the sting of death would have been detected thousands of miles away. The G-Man has now detected this disturbance and now heads towards the incoming rumbling. In the latest episode, we see that the entire Global Alliance lined up their fleet to face the incoming rumbling, armed with the latest up-to-date and back to these colossal titans. As Godzilla heads toward the rumbling, we can be sure that the G-Men will waste no time taking the long route. He's taking shortcuts. If the rumbling takes place in the MonsterVerse cinematic universe, Godzilla will leverage vortexes that are located in the oceans. These allow Titans to travel from point A to point B in record time, similar to how he did this in King of the Monsters. This will allow Godzilla to get there faster and fight some of these colossal Titans in a more favorable arena. Water. Except this water is boiling hot. Will this be a problem for Godzilla? Absolutely not. It is actually a lot more likely that the insides of Godzilla are a lot hotter than the surrounding boiling water. This is because the G-Man's biology can be described as thermonuclear, powered by an internal biological nuclear reactor of sorts that keeps this Titan alive and also aids in the powering of his most important weapon of all, his atomic breath. There was no doubt that Godzilla would almost have to rely on this weapon if he were ever to stand a chance here. Which brings the question, could Godzilla defeat all of these 570,000 plus colossal titans absent atomic breath? We know the G-Man's melee prowess is almost second to none. These things are basically half his height, which means that these would easily be dispatched on both land and sea. On land, the G-Man could rely on his impressive set of jaws, clawed hands, and a sledgehammer of a tail that would tear these things apart. On water, Godzilla would have to just swim through them, leveraging his sharp dorsals with his dorsal slice maneuver. The problem with this is that it would take the G-Man weeks or even months to catch up and destroy every single individual colossal titan without taking any breaks, only to turn back and find that these things will regenerate after getting all cut up. Oh yeah, if you didn't know, the only way to effectively kill these types of titans is a cut through the nape. And even with Godzilla's habit of cutting off heads, this will take too long a time to kill all colossal titans. This is where the atomic breath comes into play. But can Godzilla kill all the colossal titans with atomic breath? We would like to say yes, but that all depends on several factors, such as how spaced out or densely packed they are in a given area, how they are arranged, and how far this atomic breath can reach. In GVK, we witnessed Godzilla literally aim towards the center of the Earth and blast a hole through the crust and mantle reaching the surface of the hollow Earth. But how much atomic breath was this, and how far did it reach? The crust of the Earth can vary in depth anywhere from 5 to 100 kilometers, depending on where you're standing. The mantle can reach depths of up to 2,900 kilometers. Why is this information important? Well, if we compare this distance to the added lengths of all the walls in Paradise Island, which in turn gives us a good estimate of how many colossal titans would fill this distance, we see that if we line up all the colossal titans side by side, this would still be a larger distance than what Godzilla blasted through in Hong Kong. Admittedly, stone, sediments, metal, and molten rock are a lot more difficult to blast through than tall, fleshy monsters. Yet this distance is still many times shorter than this line of titans. Godzilla could probably wipe out most of the colossal titans, but would be heavily, if not totally, depleted of energy at the end. And that's assuming these titans are all at once placed in a single line. Remember, if Godzilla takes a break and recovers, the remainder of the colossal titans would continue their warpath of destruction. So perhaps trying to take out every single one of these titans is not the best idea. Would Godzilla figure this out? Yes, and here's why. Number 2. The Alphas Once the G-Man encounters hundreds of thousands of swimming titans, he'll first gauge the threat by destroying a few of them with the atomic ray. Godzilla's habit of aiming at the head will appear again, allowing him to destroy the napes of each of these colossal titans, preventing them from regenerating again. But upon looking at the horizon and seeing the plethora of colossal titans, the G-Man now has a decision to make. Waste his time trying to take out all of these smaller titans or going to the source of the problem. 
That's right, alpha titans such as Godzilla process things more differently than you might think. Upon seeing how all of these creatures are moving with a single purpose, he'll immediately confirm that there is in fact something else controlling these titans. Something is telling them what to do. Another leader. Another alpha. If you know legendary Godzilla, you'll know where this is going. One of Godzilla's many attributes is the ability to detect other Alpha Titans around the globe, or at least determine the existence of another giant monster assuming a leadership role. In the past, we've seen a similar scenario where the G-Men determined that this Genitor Swarm was actually led by a larger specimen. By observing their behaviors, Godzilla was quickly able to determine that there is in fact someone behind all of this, and instead of wasting its atomic breath and energy on half a million of these colossal titans, he's heading for the source. Godzilla will now try to take out the Founding Titan. Now, it is quite possible that this Founding Titan could literally be anywhere, which means getting to it would be an uphill battle of pushing through hundreds of thousands of colossal titans, and at this point it could have already made landfall. In this scenario, Godzilla pushes through tons of colossal titans, cutting through them like a hot knife through butter, blasting his way through walls of meat leaving piles of burnt flesh in his wake. At last, the G-Man has reached the Founding Titan, but is met with a nasty surprise. This thing is a lot bigger than he imagined. The man controlling this massive creature is known as Aaron Yeager, who just recently acquired the full power of the Founding Titan and whose Titan's embodiment resembles something never seen before. This eccentric shape possibly is a result of Aaron's head being detached from his body upon transformation, creating this long, massive line of rib-like structure. There are no real concrete official sizes, but by observing how it compares to the surrounding colossal titans, we can conclude that Eren's founding titan towers over Godzilla at approximately 350 meters in height. Yeah, that's taller than the Eiffel Tower, and anywhere between 800 to 900 meters in length. Godzilla is now dwarfed. But size is the least of things here. This thing has some serious abilities up its sleeve. Aaron Yeager holds three of the nine Titans, the Founding, Attack, and Warhammer Titan. The ability to summon any of the past Titan shifters, ability to create more colossal Titans, and ability to morph into any of the Titan forms. There are more abilities, but in this episode we'll focus on the abilities relevant to a fight against Godzilla. So now we see that there is a really good reason why Godzilla is now aiming to take out the Founding Titan. In terms of melee prowess, Eren's Founding Titan really can't do much since its physical build compared to Godzilla's is still way too fragile to actually engage in a 1v1 combat. Its limbs would snap upon making contact with a robust creature like the G-Man. Even if Eren does morph into any of the other Titan forms, Godzilla would still be able to physically outclass any of these nine Titan forms. So what can Eren's founding Titan do against Godzilla, and how will the G-Man react upon seeing such a monstrosity of a Titan? Let's find out! Number 3. Godzilla vs. Founding Titan Godzilla first lets out a roar of defiance against the much larger Founding Titan, and begins to charge its atomic breath while running to get a closer look to assess this threat and look for weaknesses. But as Godzilla begins to close the distance, this Titan triggers one of his many abilities, Hardened Spikes. This natural hardening ability is courtesy of the Warhammer Titan, allowing this shifter to create almost any sort of structure and weapon such as spikes. These can grow pretty large, they're made out of hardened titan flesh, but while these could possibly pierce, there is no guarantee that these could cause lethal damage to an extremely dense titan like the G-Man. The problem with this ability is that it must be used in moderation. Using it too much will exhaust the titan shifter. These spikes, however, would keep him at bay for now. So it's evident at this point that this isn't really a question of if Godzilla can stop the rumbling, but can Godzilla defeat this founding titan? Even at a distance, the Founding Titan would still be at range for Godzilla. And given his habit at aiming for the head, this atomic ray with temperatures of more than 500,000 degrees Celsius will make way into the Founding Titan's skull, through the back of the head, and destroying Eren Jaeger's head, which controls this Founding Titan. The death of Eren Jaeger now means that the power of the Titans is now relinquished, and all Titans in existence would vanish before everyone's eyes. The rumbling in Attack on Titan could not be stopped with the current technology available in this era. 
Had this rumbling occurred during the late World War II, Cold War era, and beyond, the rumbling would have been obsolete, especially given the advent of missile and atomic weaponry. And since Godzilla himself is the embodiment of atomic weapons, there is no doubt that a creature this large, with such weapons, would have no problem defeating any sort of titan. So, to finish off, could the rumbling actually work in the MonsterVerse cinematic universe? If Godzilla decides to solo this entire event, he could. Only if he goes directly for the founding Titan. A more realistic scenario would be Godzilla summoning his own army of Titans. Kaiju including Titanus Rodan, Mothra, Behemoth, Methuselah, Scylla, Amulek, Kong, and many other kaiju that would rise up as a pack and put an end to this rumbling. If you enjoy fun crossovers and what-if scenarios involving kaiju, monsters, and dinosaurs, you've officially found the best channel for this sort of content. Subscribe, like this video, and don't forget to join Warth.